are at it again. First of all, welcome to another episode here with Queen City Reefs and More. Truly appreciate that you're back with me here watching another episode, another of what I would call an unboxing and then install. We have an Avast Calc Stirrer. So I actually ordered this a few months ago because I've been having some pH issues and you may be asking, I thought you got a CO2 scrubber. Well, I did and I'm still using it. I decided to install it in the recirculating manner and to be honest, I'm not getting the results that I would like in the recirculating manner. As far as it lasting for a while, it absolutely is, but it is not raising my pH up to that 8.3, 8.4 that I used to see. As a matter of fact, I even tried removing the recirculating fact, you know, factor from it and just do the regular way and I was still not getting 8.3, 8.4 anymore. And the only thing that I know that has changed is I've actually don't have as many pets as I used to have, which would be a good thing, right? Not a lot of CO2. I do plan on buying a CO2 monitor just so I can have an idea of how much CO2 is in the house. And then, you know, seeing what I can do based on those results. In the meantime, though, I've always wanted to install calc stir. I've used calc washer before and I can tell you that I love the results of calc washer. The only reason I did I stopped using it is because I was using it through an ATO. So but what, what happened there is that my pump ended up uh, messing up twice and so I was like you know what it, it's too harsh on the pumps let me figure out a different way. So then I, I moved over to two part solution and that's been over a year now maybe po probably two then I decided to invest in a calc stir here and that's exactly what i'm going to be installing so this here literally is just this in the box it is an acrylic container pretty much with a motor that actually stirs the calc washer now you can stir it 24 7 you can stir it on a timer whatever the case is i may do 24 7 and see how that goes you get your dosing line and then you get this here which is meant to have half inch toes where it actually will dispose every time that you fill in top off water from through here it will push water up with the solution and it will uh, release some of your calc water pretty much i actually purchased this during a time that they had a 15 percent off so i was able to get this larger unit i have plenty of space for it in my sump i'm actually going to use an ecotech versa to feed it rodi in order to then get the calc solution through you know to my sump I'm going to go ahead and work on installing this. I don't know if you have any questions by now. If you do, pop them in the comments below. I will install this. I will, I'll bring you back here in a minute to talk about what I did. I'll show you exactly how I installed it, so on and so forth. And then I will bring you back in a matter of a week or two to let you know what I think of it so far. All right, let's get to it. It's been actually five whole weeks since I've actually uh, connected the calc washer reactor. But the good thing about that is that it's actually given me some opportunity to actually test it, use it, see what I think, and then give y'all my final opinion on it. I'm gonna turn this camera around, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing so far, and then we're gonna go back and hook it up. All right, so here it is. And what we're doing here is actually cleaning it out because and I had to do a lot of research on it and there's not a lot that you can find. So I'm gonna tell you my experience and hope this helps you or someone. But from my experience, the calcwasser doesn't always fully dissolve. I would say that in the last week or so, my pH has gone down and my alkalinity and my calcium is not staying consistent at the same level that I was getting it at when I first installed it. So what does that mean? I initially went into this and those that are watching, if you already have experience with this, I would definitely appreciate you telling me something here. What I thought going into this was that I would fill this up with RODI, drop the calc washer powder in here and let it rotate and do my solution dosing from this calc washer. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how I, I'm dosing, how much I'm dosing, how often and all that in here in a minute. There was quite about maybe an inch still. It looked almost the same as when I first dropped the calc washer powder in here. 
it's, it seemed to be the same level five weeks later yet my pH went down to its normal value that I've had it before running calc wasser and without running the co2 scrubber to where it was 7.7 to 7.8 at night and then like 8.0 to 8.1 in the daytime so I increased the solution yet the numbers wouldn't change yet I con consistently had to manually dose more alkalinity and calcium to keep up with the demand of the tank finally this past weekend I was like I need to do some research so in my situation let me show you what I've been using because maybe it has to do with where I'm getting at and I'm, I'm sure that every product is going to be different so what I've been using is the Brightwell Aquatics Calc Plus 2 which basically is calcium, magnesium, and strontium all in one. Now, when this was at full strength, assuming on you know the first week at least, I could tell you that my magnesium levels were still going down little by little while my alk and calcium levels were remaining stable. I also wanna point out that I've, I've been supplementing with my two part, and I'll talk more about it when I show you how I'm connecting this back up. So even though I, I already had my level set of that, of my two part to what I needed to dose on top of this, my alk and my calcium would remain stable while my magnesium was going down. So I'm assuming there's very little magnesium in this, enough to make it not go down as fast maybe. I use this because of the whole magnesium being part of this and I didn't need to include a magnesium container with another doser and all that and I figured it could, you know, this could do. Either way, magnesium, I don't mind dosing it manually because it you dose it once and the value of it comes down very, very, very slowly to where you're not dosing on a daily or, or every other day basis either. It's almost once a week for me at least, even more sometimes. This right here would fill it up up to maybe like three inches and you could see stirring it up and one great thing about the Avast Marine is that you're able to leave the motor on 24 7. They say it on their website at least and I, that's exactly what I've been doing. I let it stir 24 7 while I drip continuously into my aquarium through the sump. So I decided that I'm going to go ahead and change it add another one of these bottles and let it stir again and dose it for a few weeks uh, and I'm gonna now keep track of how long it lasts because I'll be honest the number one thing that I was thinking is that it would let me know that more was needed once it completely depleted and you wouldn't see any more of this uh, powder stirring at the bottom and so every time I would check I would check for the powder and I would notice that it was still a lot in there and I'm like, wow, you know, if that five weeks later and, and you know, prior to me noticing, right, you know, uh, four weeks later and we're still at this much. I mean, how long will this last? And I'm like, wow, that, that that's amazing. Uh, so now that I'm noticing that I might still need to change it at least once a month, uh, I'm starting to reevaluate either this and go move into a different type of calc washer. I don't know, because uh, honestly, my hope here was that I wouldn't have to mess with this as much if I put enough powder in here to be stirring at all times. Let me know your thoughts. Those that run, run calc washer, let me know if, if you're actually, if your calc washer system actually depletes all the powder that is, that is stirring in there and then you add more or are you having to constantly change it out? What do you do with that, you know, with that powder? Do you throw it down the drain, down the toilet, out in your yard? I mean, what do you do? With, you know, I, I would think that this would not be good if I'm having to change it and throw it out into the drain so many times and eventually clock something up i don't know i i want to make sure that i'm careful with this so if you are one that exp is experiencing what i'm experiencing what do you do when you change it out uh, where do you get rid of it um, i'm assuming that i would probably pa pass it through a very fine strainer through to get the liquid liquid out keep the powder and then dump the dump it into the trash but i'm trying to save myself as much uh steps as i can and not have to go through all that uh, that is my experience so far. Now let me take you to where I'm going to put it. I'm going to turn the camera back around so you can see where it's going. Here it is. I have it in the very left side of the tank right next to the sump. I have it on this little basket that my wife used for school and I asked if I could have it just to prop it up because I have a hose that comes from right here all the way down to one of the openings for where the water comes in from from the tank which i feel that has enough turbulence in there to mix it up before it doses it to the tank now one thing i was thinking of while i was setting this up is the fact that this avast marine does not have a lid that is very tight and you know how they say 
that with calc you want to which i don't think it should be an issue but yeah, I don't know. You let me know. Uh, you know, this just can lift up. I'm, I'm wondering if maybe the solution, the potency of the solution doesn't stay as strong for as long because of that. I've seen like other devices like Reef Octopus that you actually have uh, screws that tighten up the lid and all that. And maybe that's what I need. Uh, but I definitely don't want to pay that price for a calc reactor because I think it's honestly way more than double than what i paid for this the k2 from a vast so i love the fact that you can actually run this motor for 24 7 and let me tell you why so here is what i do i actually right over there you'll see right now i've actually that's slower than what i normally do and i'll tell you why in a minute but my normal dose uh dosing of this is two and a half gallons which is 10 liters of this solution a day and I run it continuously through a Versa pump which is the reason why I love the fact that I can stir it 24 7 because it's continuously dosing eight millimeters a day which ends up putting me at you know two and a half gallons a day so you have something to look at let me tell you what my results have been so when I installed this for the first two to three weeks, uh, my results were amazing. I was dosing about 120 millimeters of alkalinity and calcium solution a day from two part. And I was able to bring that down to like 30 millimeters per day. So about a fourth of what I was actually needing to dose. And so that that to me is a win in itself because I feel like two part solution can get to be more expensive than Calcwasser. So that was amazing. And, and I was, I'm keeping my parameters between 8.5 to 9.0 alkalinity and 400 to 450 calcium and 1450 to 1500 of magnesium. pH, which was the main point of this whole test. pH, I was able to keep it at 8.4 to 8.42 in the daytime, of course. And then at night, it would go down to 8.2 8.25 that was amazing to me the polyp extension was you could see the polyp extension on these corals and i wish i could show you because i didn't actually film that since at this five week mark i was planning on making a video this past weekend and you know again with kids and everything and their sports and everything it's just it's hard to keep up with all that so right now the ph sits at 7.7 7.8 at night and 8.0 to 8.1 at the, in the daytime and everything still looks great but it's obvious that the polyp extension on a lot of these SPS are not where I once saw them for the period of those three weeks and so my goal is to see if how long I can you know keep running the calc reactor without having to change or clean out the calc washer in there and then uh, maybe buy different type of Calcwasser products from different brands to see if the results are any different or if they're the same. Uh, because I definitely want to know if there is a more cost effective solution out there than what I'm experiencing with this Calcwasser. All right, so that's been my experience as far as parameters. That's been my experience as far as the Calcwasser and the brand Brightwell that I'm using. I'm using the Versa. Oh, I, I am hanging up another board over there. Uh, as you can see, there's another controller board and I actually have a Comor X4 Pro Wi-Fi that sits right up there that, and then and, and the dosing, the, my two part that I'm essentially gonna end up connecting right there uh, so that I can dose at this end of the tank. I was actually thinking of connecting the Versa pump there as well but the issue is that the Versa I currently have connected to the EB8 from Apex to be able to turn it off when I feel that it's, you know, remotely when I feel that the pH is either too high or uh, the alkalinity or the levels have gone too high where the evaporative rate is not the, not what it was, you know, in the summer at least. And so I'm trying to keep track of all that. I could write codes and have it do all that manually or automatically, but I'm not a pro at writing codes like that and I haven't had the chance to research what others have done in order to, you know, imitate what they've done. Uh, so far, you know, I take my time when it comes to those things just because, you know, I got so many things going on.
So this is three days later from when I actually changed the calc washer in the calc reactor. And as you can see right now, here's where my parameters are at. Now I'm actually getting up to 8.36. Alk is actually was going up, so I had to lower the dosage. It, it went over nine, but I try to keep it around 8.5 to nine, so I'm good with that. So as you can see here, the line comes from behind the tank and then that is connected to the calc reactor and it actually pushes water all the way down. I did mention earlier, and you'll see how this stir stirs the media in there. And then this line here is actually connected right here. You'll see it. And I, it actually is all the way towards the bottom there to where it picks up water from this ATO unit and it runs it all the way from the back of the tank into this area and then it pushes water out through there. As you can see it, it's running. And so that is it. All right, so thanks again for tuning in. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Please consider hitting the like button. I will catch you guys and gals on the next one. interrupt these quick messages because uh, I wanted to announce we had a power outage today and it went out at 11 p.m. at night.